On today's episode of The Advisory Deck, we're going to talk about business assessment frameworks such as SWOT analyses and PESTLE analyses, what they are, what they're used for, where we see them grossly misused, um, and how you can employ these simple frameworks and models appropriately to help you understand your business and the likely trajectories of success and plans that you're going to need to move to get you beyond 2020. We think it's perfect for business leaders uh, who are going through business business and strategic planning processes, as well as the advisors in their corners. Hope you enjoy. Hi, it's Troy Forrest and James McGill. We're back on the advisory deck. I've just started early because James just put a Mentos in his mouth. So I've absolutely thank done you, that. Troy. Stitch him right up. Well done. Um, thank you, James, for joining uh, uh, me once again. For those of you who haven't been playing along at home just yet, uh, uh, Troy Forrest from Strategy Road. I've got a 25 year background in sales, business development, um, and strategic planning facilitation uh, processes. James, your background quickly? Um, similar time frame, unfortunately, uh, makes us feel old. Uh, operations and then lots of merger acquisition, um, business implementation, change and growth. Lots of stuff, lots of marketplaces, broad experience, jack of lots of trade, I don't know about master of uh, maybe a couple, but uh, uh, what we're doing in these conversations is really trying to add some value, provoke some thought, um, mm. give some lead in ideas to business owners and leaders of businesses trying to navigate 2020 and beyond. Um, and if you want to have deeper conversations with us, you can come and do that and can sit on the advisory deck with us. Uh, and we throw to some subject matter experts who can give some um, deeper uh, ideas on particular topics. We also call it the advisory deck because we have a deck of like card things that we made up um, to look at different business concepts and ideas. Mm. Um, sometimes we pick them at random. Today we're not going to do that. We're going to talk about uh, uh, one that um, uh, has been coming up a fair bit lately. Um, we're going to talk about SWAT and PESL. Uh, now that's not what you do to a fly and it's not what you grind your spices up with in a mortar. Um, James, SWAT and PESL, what are they? Well, I think I'd like to talk about more than that as well. Okay. Um, so given we don't have any rules for this, I'll, I'll, I'll take it wherever we like to take it. Just give him an inch. And... So, so the, these are, these, these two, um, are, are simply strategic models. And all, all that means is it's a framework. And mm -hmm. it's, it's there, there are a series of questions um, and ways of, of thinking about your business um, that helps you figure out answers more quickly. Mm. It doesn't mean you get the right answer, right. Um, but in a way that you know, it's like having having a script for a play. Right, you, you kind of know where it's going. You can mm. you can follow along. Uh, it doesn't mean it's a great play, mm. but you've got some opportunity there to work through them. So the, the, the SWOT. You know, I think I think maybe we can talk about why why they're interesting, but also how they're used poorly. Mm and how people can use them better mm. uh, and how they can add value to, I think, to a company. Yeah. Um, so without, I mean, you, you can Google SWOT and, and, and PESL and all the others, Ansoft Matrix and a whole range of things. Um, there, there's, you know, it doesn't take that long to figure them out. Um, the, the SWOT is the old strengths and weakness. You know, it's, it's, and, and it, the general view is you, you list off what are your strengths and weaknesses and what are the opportunities and threats and the, sort of the next step of that is um, the, the strengths are the internal strengths of the business and the opportunities are the things that you can go and do externally. Mm -hmm. The weaknesses are the internal weaknesses and the threats are the things that competitors and so forth. So there's, there's some subtle, um, subtle explanations in there. What we see often with people when they're doing SWOT, you do it as part of a strategic planning day. Right? Mm -hmm. And these wonderful things where if you've got a governance board or an executive, uh, people can spend, and I used to spend, Weeks out, weeks in advance, you start gathering information, and you're doing analysis and you're creating models and you're putting information together and you're building up a business case of where the strategy should go and you're getting all the presentations ready um, and you get to the, the board meeting and your annual planning day and you spend hours debating things and then maybe you, you get some agreements and you write them up and six months later everyone's forgotten about them, we've gone back to the reality of the world and then in six months after that, 12 months again, uh, you go back to say, well, here's where we are. And what, where you are bears no resemblance to where the plan said you were going to be. And no one's thought about it for the 10 months in between. Uh, so it sat there on the shelf gathering dust. And I think that there's, 
you know, strategic planning days by rights, I think, have got a bad name because they're horrible things when they're done badly. And they're wonderful the things. I facilitate, they're, but... they're wonderful <laughs> things when they're done well, right? And when they're done well, it's because they're not done as a once a year thing. They're done yeah. and part of the outcome isn't we'll see you in 12 months and we'll come back to this 80 page plan that has so much information in it that no one knows what's going on. And more importantly, it hasn't been translated down to the team that are supposed to deliver this thing. When it's done well, it's embedded in the business. Uh, and then there's follow-ups, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever the follow-ups are for the right people, that they're embedded in that plan. You know, this is the communication piece of that plan. And I think SWOT has an example, one of the biggest, biggest issues with something like SWOT is that People don't talk about weakness being, which is a tough conversation to have, mm. weakness being that thing that the board or the executive are the major weakness in a business because they take the information, they sit on it, and they think, well, this is really confidential, we're going to make this happen. And the people on the front line, whether it's at the customer service areas, whether it's driving the trucks, whether it's you know, in, in the factory, have got no idea what the strategy day was about, mm. and they don't care and they just keep on doing what they're doing. Yeah. Um, so as an example then with, with um, any strategic planning day where these sort of models are often used, really important was trying, I know you do these with the sessions you run, a, a key outcome has to be how do you get the information from these models, and the people don't want to know the models, right? They just want to know the outcomes normally. They might, might be interested you've gone through a process, but generally speaking, they don't get paid to care about what you've sat in the boardroom all day doing, or, you know, probably, they probably think you're wasting time. Yeah. It's the outcomes, and more importantly, then it's it's that outcome doesn't get announced on one on day one, and forgotten about. Mm. It keeps coming back. So I'm going to ask you some questions about this in a moment. Sure. Um, but I, th I think then the opportunity for something like SWOT is, especially where there's an opportunity or a threat or a weakness or a strength, which is what SWOT is, is what's the action that goes with that. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you've got an opportunity, people go, oh, is our SWOT analysis tends to sit in a four box matrix mm. and there's a list of dot points about what, what those things are. The opportunity is we'll take a new product to a new market. You know, we've got product development and you might have a couple of pages on that and go, but that doesn't create anything. No. Now, so those opportunities have actually become a whole operational strategy, a whole operational plan because that has to translate to something. Yes. So the SWOT analysis shouldn't sit there as a one pager and go, well, that's that. No. That should drive a whole whole range of discussions that keep on coming back into team meetings, internal newsletters, go up on the notice boards around the around the business about what we're doing on these things. Yeah. You know, that, that you've, you've, got to, you've got to get people on the, on the journey with you and be talking about it and coming back and let them know that your strategy day is driving change, driving improvement, and it doesn't happen once a year. No. You know, the ambition of these, and I think when they are used the way they should be used, in my opinion at least, is that they are catalysts for thought to get you mm. to consider the different dimensions of what's happening inside the organisation in that moment in time and what's happening outside the organisation that has the potential to help or hinder you mm. get where you want to go. And I think that's really important with these models to you know, give them context, to sit here and say, do a SWOT analysis of your organisation. It's the, it's the nice go-to, easy box filling in aspect of a planning day, mm. right? Um, but without a sense of context, without a specific ambition, you know, where are we actually trying to go and what are our strengths pertaining to this and where are the weaknesses in our mm. current game to get us there? Um, over genericizing SWOT analyses mm. is just a trap that I see so many organizations kind of fall into. If I had a dollar for every time um, we said strengths, what are our strengths? Our people, yeah. <laughs> great. It's on everybody's strategic yep. planning process as well. So be a little clearer, be a little mm. more specific and honest about um, you know what's actually coming out of there. And to James's point, these are moment in time thoughts that will change. Mm. You know, you've got mm. to use this as a as a comparison and a contrasting tool to what you are actually planning. It should absolutely drive what you plan. Again, a lot of planning processes mm. I see a SWOT analysis or a PESEL analysis, you know, completely independent of what we actually came up with in the plan yep. and to your point yep. completely independent of what we actually went to do mm -hmm. so it come back to it and say well hang on a sec other priorities we've actually defined for the business here other things we're actually going to go and do leveraging our strengths strapping our achilles heels and our weaknesses or yep. navigating around mm. them um you know uh, uh, protecting us from those huge threats and really capitalizing on the best opportunities mm. for mm. us
So we're talking about strategy days and, and using models. I think they're great frameworks. Yeah. Anybody can Google and find out whether it's SWOT or another one I use, Ansoft Matrix, um, in, in ways of what, what Ansoft allows you to do is think about where you want to grow your business. So do you take a, an existing product and try and sell more of that product to your existing customers? You know, it's a two for one offer. Do you take an existing product to a new market? You know, do you take a new product to a new market? There's, there's ways of saying, Again, with risk and with, with um, resourcing, how do you how do you manage that growth? People forget, as we've been talking about, that it's not the day that's important. Right? It's a preparation. You can't. I think work, walking into a strategy day and saying oh, we're going to do a SWOT analysis is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. I think you shouldn't have a, a team sitting around doing a SWOT analysis if they're coming together once a year. You can do that work beforehand. You can be collating. I know you this, Troy. You know you can facilitate and get people thinking, so they turn up having done some of this work. The value in these sessions is more about, great, we've got a SWOT, who cares? Mm -hmm. How do we use that information to transform the business? That's mm -hmm. what we are, that, that, that constant conversation that everybody should be having. How do I add value to this business? How does this business add value to its customers and its shareholders? Because that's fundamentally all we're here to do. Yeah. Whether it's financial value or a, a lifestyle value, whatever it might be, if you're not adding value to the stakeholders of a business, then you're not going to be in business or you're not going to be as successful as you could be. So I think that's a key thing out of the strategy days and thinking about the models you use is, how does this help us add value? Yes. The second piece, as you were talking about before, is how often are we going to come back and talk about this again? Mm. You know, and it's hard, and especially you know, the big national firm, to get people back together. It's even harder at the moment, sitting here in the middle of uh, July 2020, mm. if you've got teams that are locked down in different states. Um, but that's just a an issue, you know, deal with the issue. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there should be a continual conversation, not rewriting the strategy. Right. Right? But when you've said it, you come back and say, how are we going with it? Um, and I, I think it's where leadership from the board or executive becomes critical, that people don't feel like they're going to turn up to a, a strategy day, a check-in one month later or two months later, be beaten around the head because they haven't gotten somewhere. Yes. It's like, if, if it was that easy to write a strategy that was going to be successful, right? And everyone would sit there and write a strategy on day one and everything would be fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's not that easy. Right? So I think the executive have to be able to say, we think this is our best way of going about it. We think this is how it's going to work, but we need to work together, which means checking in, yeah. figuring out where are our assumptions, which is really all a strategy is. Where are our assumptions okay? Well, let's keep on talking about it, not rewriting it, not spending hours and hours doing more work, mm -hmm. but just doing those quick check-ins. And that's how you do that with people to say, let's come back and make sure we're on the right track guess what the world changes around us yeah. right, when we can't control that oh these are these are really good compare and contrast tools that they, they, they're, they're often used quite mm. poorly because they are used as these single generic snapshot mm. moment in time okay we've done it now we've ticked yep. the box now let's actually make some decisions mm -hmm. no 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 the whole point of the exercise was to inform the decisions mm. to look mm. for patterns you know what, yep. what's what's these tea leaves that we're sitting here and we're all in agreement that these are okay these genuinely are our strengths and these genuinely yep. are the opportunities What's the tea leaves telling you mm. to inform mm. that decision making? I also think you're looking for outliers. I think yes. you're looking for yes. those things, okay, you know, seven out of nine of these things are kind of stock standard and they've been this way all the time. Mm. But this dimension keeps moving. When we come back and do this over and over again, this yeah. keeps shifting. Yeah. Why? What's that telling us and how are we going to interpret that then in our decision making? Mm. Now, you know, they are frameworks. They're thinking frameworks. They're discussion frameworks. Um, you can use them in lots and lots of different cases. We were just talking earlier. You have someone who's going for a job uh, interview yeah. who was sitting down and doing a little SWOT analysis of their own and they're fit mm. for the organisation as well. Terrific. Mm. Um, uh, view them as that. View them as, you know, models to help inform decisions to drive activity. That's yeah. what they're there for, right? Spot on. Okay, um, the take homes. Take homes uh, on, on, I guess, models in, in, in more general sense. You've taken the liberty of uh, expanding yeah, the conversation a little um, Extremely powerful. Don't overbake them. I, I think it, it's something which can help but it's not going to give you the, the uh, foolproof solution. So pick four or five that uh, help you work through the strategy and the operations and it might be a financial model as well. Um, and, and then figure out what the outcomes from those models are going to do to help you move the business forward as opposed to the model being something that sits on a page and then gets turned over and you forget about. It's, that, it's the stuff that you, you're sitting there and you're seeing all of these things mm -hmm. come together mm -hmm. on the model and going, 
Oh my God, I haven't, I haven't thought about that. That's what this is telling us. So it's that yeah. process. It's not the document. It's not the whiteboard. It's yeah. not the terrible chicken scratch handwriting mm -hmm. of the facilitator. It's the thinking and what it leads you to conclude, to decide, and then go and plan and act on, right? That's it. All right, well, we're pretty good with business models when um, uh, frameworks and these kind of conversations. If you want to have a conversation with us, and hey, we can unpack a SWOT analysis on your business uh, live on the deck if you want to come and sit with us and have a coffee. It's a brave but really powerful thing to do. Um, or we'll come to your place. Um, get in touch with us, contact details down the bottom. James, pleasure as always. Good times, Troy. Thank you. Okay, thanks everyone for being on the advisory deck.